I've just started printing all the parts needed for my next project, which is an autonomous boat. The parts themselves are pretty big. So this is actually only an eighth of the final size. So it's gonna be like that big by that big. And obviously these are pretty big bits. Now, because I'm printing an ABS, there's a slight issue of warping that can happen. And I've realized what my problem is. My printer isn't in an enclosure, which means all of the hot air that usually you want to surround an ABS print with isn't there. So the temperature differential between the top of the print and the heat bed is causing enough, di well, it's enough difference for the print to warp. Not good. So I went online and had a look at some enclosures and I saw the price and I was like, nah, hell no. I went away and drew up some designs, which is here. Um, let's see, all right, let's hold that. So that's the cabinet that my printer already sits on top of because it's, this room is an office, really, um, not a workshop, and it's tiny. That kind of constricts my design I can do for this enclosure. So the idea is it's going to be 450 mils high to encapsulate the height of the printer. That's going to be edged with some pine strip wood. And then on the ends and the sides, it's going to be covered in clear acrylic. The acrylic, I just got that cut to size for me because I don't want to be messing around with that. And I took a trip to my local hardware store and I got all the wood I need. There really is not enough space for a proper workbench in here. So this plastic box is gonna have to do. After making sure to measure twice and cut twice, I ended up with three different lengths of wood. 450 millimeters, 407 millimeters and 656 and I had four of each. The reason for the funny numbers is due to the width of 21 millimeters of the wood itself which just meant I had to do a little bit of maths to account for that in my design. So I also had a bit of a think about how I'm going to join everything together because I don't really like the idea of having visible screw heads at the front. So I designed like these little braces basically so each of those sits on a bit of wood, so you get like a little L shape like that, and it should hold together hopefully pretty well. I marked and then pre-drilled each of the holes for the brackets. For the base, I'm using a piece of white chipboard, 450 millimeters wide and 700 millimeters long. <laughs> so I'm off by literally a millimeter. And that's going to bug me. I've realised that I'm going to have to cut a little section at the back here because if you look on my... Oh! Ow! That was a microphone. <laughs> so if you look down the back here, you see I've got the power cable for the printer sort of down the back. And I need to make sure that there's a channel available for that also in this enclosure. With the chunky drill bit, I just punched that hole right through. I built up the vertical sections next and then I moved on to sorting out the horizontal beams. It was just a lot easier to install the brackets on these top beams before I tried to screw them in. Now between the acrylic and the pieces of wood, I've found this sort of draft excluder sort of tape that you stick on doors to prevent the wind getting in the winter. And I'm thinking that could be really useful for keeping hot air inside the enclosure. So there's no escaping air from the joint between the acrylic and the wood. That wasn't as satisfying as I thought it would be. Yeah, counter sinking didn't really work very well by the look of it. There we go. I've got the first of the acrylic panels on, but at this point I'm hungry and I'm tired. So I'm gonna stop here for tonight, I think, and come back tomorrow. Also, I need some more screws. I've run out. I've also gone through my backup set of screws and they've run out. So more of the story, make sure to buy enough screws when you do this yourself. Don't make my mistake. I've got screws, they're multiplying. And I'm drilling this hole. Of the power you're supplying 
<laughs> it's electrifying. I'm really out of tune. <laughs> Yeah, so next I went and installed the remaining acrylic pieces for the top and the sides of the enclosure. Oh, and I made sure that this time around to countersink all the screw heads properly. It looks a lot better now. After that was the two doors. I had to cut these to size myself, so I used a craft knife to score the sheet and then I was able to snap it in half fairly cleanly. Then I drilled the holes that the bolts of the door handles went through. I gave the handles a bit of a test fit, but the bolts were just a bit too long to sit flush. So I grabbed a bit of scrap wood and used that to fashion mounting brackets, which was a great excuse to finally get a Dremel. The door hinges were next. These were butt hinges, I believe, and screwed into these small blocks that I made. I messed up the drilling of the holes for them though, so I had to redo that for the doors to sit nicely. Since the doors didn't exactly shut properly, I designed and printed these magnetic clasps, and you can find a link to the design files in the video description. The design to fit these really little magnets I was able to salvage from a broken brushless motor, which came off my big drone, Stanley, and incidentally, I used a Stanley knife to extract them and then a pair of pliers to finally pull them out of the casing. To install the magnets, I used some fast setting epoxy and then used a bit of broken propeller to sort of smush it into the holes needed. And yeah, I really probably should have worn gloves for this. These clamps came in perfect for sort of pressing the magnets into the holes, but I did have to clean them up afterwards, which wasn't so ideal. And then I just repeated the same process for these little blocks as well. This is the first door close mechanism. And as you can see, I've got magnets installed here and on these little nubbits here, which will attach to the door themselves. However, I've created this one with a magnet stuck in the wrong orientation. <sighs> which is why I went ahead and made a second one. Now with this, I made sure that the magnets are correct. So I can take that one off, put that one on like that, and this one like that. I've gone ahead and removed the 3D print lines with some sandpaper on these parts. So the next thing to do is just to install them in the frame. With that done, it was time to put the printer in the enclosure. That is with room to spare. <laughs> There is a little bit of warping happening already, um, however there is no cracking that I can observe. So that is so far a thumbs up from me. I'm going to try using some ABS Plus instead because this is just straight ABS and hopefully that should do the trick to prevent the warping happening on the next print. I also had to redo the Z levelling for my printer vest which seems to have shifted a bit and the next print didn't warp. It did have the cracks though, which was a bit annoying. So I thought maybe some smaller models might work better. So I printed some low poly Pokemon. So just looking at these little guys, I'm very happy with how the results have come out. There's no warping on their base, minimal Z banding, and you know, there's no print artifacts going on. Clearly the enclosure is working. I'm thinking then that my big pieces that I'm printing, their issue is due to the footprint on the bed. Maybe I've got some sections that are quite thin and long and that's just not getting good enough adhesion to stick down and avoid warping. Now I've got a few more things I want to do on the enclosure, such as maybe installing a filter of some kind over here, maybe drill a few holes, stick a PC case fan on there, get a piece of filter of some description just to 
avoid the ABS fumes because at the minute I open the doors like this, right? And I get greeted with a horrendous draft of ABS fumes. It is horrible. Oh man. So I've got like a little filter I stick in there after print's done, but really I kind of want to get away with not having to do that and it will be automatic and lovely, but anyway. Another project for another time. I have actually managed to get a hold of a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and I've installed it in this lovely sort of position here. I've got a camera rigged up on it so I can get lovely octolapse time lapses. Now, without the help of RPI Locator on both Twitter and Mastodon, uh, handles like here on screen, I would not have been able to get a hold of this. So big thank you to whoever runs that account. I'm pretty stoked about how this has come out. It's able to reach a temperature of about 10 degrees over ambience. I've seen prints going at about 30 degrees over in that far corner where it's probably colder. And in the room, it's been about 18. That's a big win in my books. I'm gonna leave a PDF of the design I drew up for this enclosure in the description of this video, in case you want to follow along and build it yourself as well as the 3D design files for the little brackets that are made to hold everything together. Thank you so much for joining me on this channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Till then.